So you think you're not a builder. Welcome to my shop. Uh, for those who are new, I appreciate you stopping by and following along with what I hope to be a successful and maybe insightful series for some of you. Now, you guys know that I do a lot of scratch building on my channel, but I've also built things from ARFs, uh, what I call builders ARFs or BARFs. Um, my P47 is a good example of that. Um, the recent Bonanza, not necessarily an ARF because that one was built, but it was a refurbishment. Um, so I, I really want to get to the heart of what kind of makes a builder. You don't just sort of start as a person who builds everything. And I think that's a big misconception that a lot of people sort of get intimidated by. They don't know how to find the joy in all of that work. And really what it is is a culmination of work, <laughs> all right? So you know how uh, a lot of guys will spend hours and hours and years working on a car to restore it or build it or build a kit plane. Uh, there are lots of different things in this world that just they just take time. And I want to try to take a new series approach and use it as a means to explore that length of time and perhaps give you a little bit more of an insight into how you can approach the builder's logic, if you will. Now, to kick things off, I do want to say uh, that I have a big thank you to some sponsors. <laughs> Over the years, I have been able to further development of my hobby by the help of other people, individuals, uh, my club specifically. Uh, I thank my club all the time. They're wonderful people and they have supported me in my building and helped bounce ideas. Okay, so that's that's number one. Uh, also, I want to thank Hobby King. They have sponsored a project to go way back to the Bugatti build. They sponsored that. Grayson Hobby sponsored some electronics and other things for the Corsair project. Horizon Hobby sponsored the uh, P47 project. And Dubro has sponsored a number of projects of mine. Uh, and more recently, they sponsored the Saab project, uh, but they continue to support all of the hardware stuff that I do as well. So thank you to Dubro as well. It's been a wonderful journey and I deeply, deeply appreciate these folks. Another big shout out goes to Master Air Screw Props, uh, Zor Props. I've worked with these, both of these companies. They, they provide fantastic materials and awesome products. So make sure that you're checking out those things too. Now, this new sponsor, I wanna give a big shout out to for this particular series. FBV Builds RC is a pretty new company, outlet, retailer, uh, really nice guy. I was able to meet Anthony at the Toledo show, and he is an outlet for all things Dynam as well as Kaven. And the, the, the selections that he has for the Dynam line are pretty remarkable to be able to be a, a one guy operation. So definitely head on over and check him out. I also want to note that uh, there's going to be a Black Friday sale uh, called the FPV Builds RC Holiday Super Sale. And all Dynam planes are going to be marked down 10 to 15 percent and they will include a free LiPo. Everything else on the site will be marked down 10 to 20 percent and will have free shipping. So head on over there check out FPV Builds RC, link it in the description. Some of their models have just been one of those staples that have been around forever. Now, one of them is uh, their Texan. Their Texan's been around for a while, as well as a number of other models. But uh, what I want to use as a subject for this particular series is their PBY Catalina. Now, I've got a little cheat sheet here that I kind of want to go over. So the, the Dynam PBY, there is an RC groups thread, uh, a forum. For those who don't know forums, you really need to look at RC groups. There is a tremendous amount of user support and information for this model. Uh, first post on this thread is 2011. Okay, so 13 years ago, all right, there are a total of 
8,959 posts. And it's still active. There are still people posting their posts from this year. Uh, so there are a, a litany of modifications for this. And I'll, I'll just give you a run through of all of the ones that I, I came across that seem to be relatively useful. All right, going down my bullet list here, shorten the floats by half an inch so that they don't tripod. So that's to help prevent uh, the, the situation where you've got a three points, so the float and the float and the nose. So it makes it really difficult to maneuver and it's not really dynamic for water. Uh, you can also raise the bow of the pontoon by a 16th of an inch, but if you do an uh, install retracts for the floats, that's another one, uh, you don't necessarily want to do that uh, because that that rake of that is not going to line up with the tip of the wing. We'll, we'll get into that because I'm actually going to do that modification. Uh, put a piece of thin plywood in the hatch floor so that the nose doesn't bend up and strike the props. So it's just a reinforcement thing. Uh, forget the wiring, the lights, uh, they're weak and red. So, uh, look at new led lights. So that's a cool project too. Uh, you can purchase white running lights and replace the red ones, uh, nose weight or tail weight. So it comes back to making sure that you've got the correct center of gravity. Sometimes on these float planes, it's really important to make sure you've got the right center of gravity, not just because of how it floats in the ground, but because of the angle of attack and particularly for high mounted motors for these kinds of, of airplanes, because it kind of wants to dig the nose into the water on takeoff. So making sure that you have the right center of gravity so that you can rotate off of water, kind of important. It's a flying boat. So yeah, that makes sense. If you guys remember and go back to the struggles that I had with the uh, CB, uh, it's the same kind of idea. I was having a trouble getting it off the ground, so I had to like essentially crazy overpower it. Um, but yeah, that's the whole idea. The next one is straighten the vertical stabilizer and elevator. Uh, we'll inspect our, our packing because we have now the V2. This is a rather old list. So just something to keep note of. Um, that sometimes the vertical stabilizer and elevators can be a little bit bent in shipping. Uh, I, I did a preliminary inspection of the packaging, but we'll go over that. Um, so replace screws with ones that are stainless so they don't rust. Uh, that's another big one. If you're going to fly off of water or snow, definitely want to look into that. Uh, the wing braces do pull out. So sometimes you want to reinforce those with some glue. Probably Gorilla Glue would be my go to for this. Uh, some other people have had luck with other glues, but, uh, that will be my go-to here. Uh, add a second elevator push rod to reinforce the elevator joiner. I'll show you this as well. The elevator joiner is, it's not very robust. It's not a good design, but, uh, to, it's sufficient. It's just not, it's not as robust as it could be. Uh, we'll say that, uh, Program differential thrust and eliminate water rudder. So that's another possibility as well. So if you have a second channel on your receiver, do that. Uh, reversible ESCs. I've got a link for some uh, reversible ESCs that'll work great for this. And uh, gear retracts. There's even someone who's done retractable landing gear on this. Uh, and you can do a servo for the turret as well. Uh, some cosmetic things to do. Uh, peel off the wheel stickers and you can take a... Uh, two and a quarter inch wheel, cut it in half and glue them to the sides so that it has more depth. Uh, we can do that. Uh, repaint it, uh, add your own decals. Uh, the squeaky toy oversized rubbery pilot. Uh, the pilot is definitely oversized for this. And I'll show you that. Uh, drinking straws to fabricate, fabricate exhaust and heat exchangers on the top of the engines. That's a, that's a, a, cosmetic thing that you can easily do. There's just two large exhaust pipes if you look at reference pictures. Um, and then you can weather the plane, you can 3D print new dummy engines, and then there's an entire kit from Park Flyer Plastics that has a belly pan with strakes in it to help with uh, tracking. It's a little bit out of scale, but those strakes might be really, really helpful for your tracking in water. Uh, two thicker plastic cowls with scale, more scale motors. Uh, more defined cow flaps, and you can replace the canopy that has better panel lines. And there's a flight crew. There's a bunch of pilots that you can do that, and I've got a link for that that I'll include. 
and then make sure that you've got your different variants that you want to do. There are tons of variants for this particular subject. There are international variants. There are rescue variants. There are uh, reconnaissance variants. There are uh, ocean variants uh, versus like fire extinguisher variants. I, I mean, there's so many things you can do with this model and finish it in a number of different ways. Um, but some of them have the side blisters. Some of them don't have the side blisters. Check your references for wheels. A lot of these just didn't actually have the retractable landing gear on them. Uh, that was for strictly amphibious stuff. So a lot of the service stuff that was in like the Pacific, generally those did not have retractable wheels. So check your variants, Re do your research. Uh, that lets you get into some of the history around this. Uh, again, same thing. Does it have the nose gun turret on it or not? Which tail type do you want to have? So you can look at modifying some of those things too. So the whole reason that I'm bringing this up is because a lot of people say, oh, well, I'm just not a builder. Well, how do you know? Uh, I'm not gonna say that everybody is a builder because I've met people that are just a little ham-handed on things and that's okay. But I do think that a lot of people can do some basic modifications without much difficulty, not requiring too much finesse. Sometimes uh, you have to try and fail in order to learn that you can do things better. Why this subject? Well, let me tell you, Dynam, again, tremendous amount of support from the community, number one. Number two, they're still cheap. In a world where you go to some companies and you get a foamy R for over $600, this one's like 230, okay? This is a, an acceptably priced ARF, okay? You can have a lot of fun. It's got enough power. It has good electronics in it. Not great, but good. It's flyable, it's serviceable. It's a good platform for going from one step to another on your journey of trying to modify things, make it your own. And it's a unique subject that you can talk about. You can hand launch this thing. You can take it off from grass. You can use it on snow. You can use it on water. It's a very versatile platform. So that's why I'm choosing this one to go and take this journey with you. So I'm gonna stop talking because I've been doing a lot of it and I'm going to put you on a tripod and we're gonna unbox this and I'll show you the quality and some of the less than desirable aspects of this model that we're gonna make better together. Here's the box. It comes in a different box. So you've got uh, the nice corrugated cardboard and then this inside. And this is a, a fairly thin corrugated cardboard, but it is pretty well protected so far. All right, some more cardboard. Um, I'm gonna set this down on the floor and we'll open each one of these one at a time. All right, looks like outer wing panels and spars, okay. All right, so right out of the box, what I'm noticing is that there's a little bit of a bowing to the main wings, these outer wing panels. I don't know if you can see that, there's a bit of a space between there. So that's something that we can probably address with a little bit of heat. We've got a heat gun uh, or a hair dryer, and uh, we can address that. Uh, our floats. Uh, looks like our um, there's a little stand for assembly, uh, as well as our struts, and looks like a bar of some kind, probably for the horizontal stabilizer. Here's our canopy. Yeah. 
Look at the size of his head compared to the size of that window. Way oversized. Looks like some extensions. Props. And hardware package, as well as some glue for assembly. That's nice. So we'll leave those bagged up for now and just set them aside. Do have a nice big decal sheet. Um, and then, ah, there it is. So not sure what these are for, maybe to do custom something or other, but uh, yeah, here's your stars and bars and then your wheels. These are like kind of small, but uh, yeah, we've got some replacements for that. Your instruction sheet uh, looks like a ESC instructions, looks like Chinese and English. English is there. Uh, same with instructions, looks like Chinese and ah, so a single sheet in English, we've got 16 steps for assembly and parts list, a wiring diagram, center of gravity, 60 to 65 millimeters from the leading edge. Uh, looks like it lines up with the front, uh, front screw hole for the pontoon, but whatever, use the measurement. And then a guide for where the stickers go. LiPo warning and some other warnings, um, control throws. So this is useful. So 2200 three cell. Nice. Okay. Good. We'll keep that, keep these and set it aside. Let's bring you guys in closer and I'll show you some of the fit and finish. I'm gonna start off here with showing you some up close shots of the assembly here. So you can see the D fitting there. And so that plastic mates up with uh, this end of a torque rod. These are very well glued in. They really, really are. Um, now you can easily try to replace this with a Dubro part um, and just create your own U bend here, but that you have to end up gluing this back into place after you're putting it into here with the, uh, with the spars. Okay, so then on top of that, the, the other thing that I've noticed here is that there's a little bit of uh, give to the foam. Uh, we'll go down here to show you what I'm talking about. So it's like a, a little bit of a flat plate here, but uh, this is the bottom. Uh, so you're gonna get some weird pitching moments if the airfoil is like this. So see how it's flat and then curved here? Because this glue, for this uh, channel here, kind of expanded. So I think that's supposed to be a more, a more symmetrical approach here, but that's fine. Um, pretty easy to uh, do some modification there. Again, using heat, not a huge, huge deal. We've got some really nice magnets going on for the hatch, but uh, it's just a, you know, notch and then the magnet holds it in place. We could install a Dubro hatch latch. Uh, I'm pretty sure I got one of those laying around. Yeah, got a hatch latch. So yeah, we can install that no problem right there. And that way we know that that hatch isn't gonna come up because you've got a prop arc. And if this pops up a little bit, uh, that's, that's a bad day. That's a bad day right there. So hatch latch catalog 925. 
Other quick modification. We talked about uh, slicing these wheels in half. So uh, we've got two and a quarter inch wheels that uh, we could slice in half and easily fit onto there and make that much more uh, pretty if you want to do that. Otherwise, if you're going to go wheel less, you can probably sand this down or even just leave it if you want to keep this color scheme. Uh, but then here's the, uh, the retract modification. These are just some, uh, flight line. I can't remember from motion RC, just some basic retracts that uh, I picked up a long time ago for a potential other project didn't work out. Uh, but yeah, you can remove this strut and then just put a piece of wire, uh, even just music wire. And then that will go into the, uh, pontoons and then It'll fold up in the wing and come down. Again, we'll do this modification later. So that's that modification. We've got parts for that. Um, so I do want to draw attention to the bottom of this model, which is super cool because they know it's a foamy, but it's got a plastic bottom on it. So you're already set for taking off from grass. You've got a nice smooth finish. that You can probably wax this if you want to fiddle with things, but it goes all the way on the step and behind too. That's pretty key. So you can use this to take off on grass, water, snow, and it's not going to really just carnage the whole bottom of the model. I've got a piece of tape here because I want to do a little bit of a test and we'll do it over here on the edge. And what I'm going to do is try to see how well this paint is adhered to the foam. This is a fun test you can do on your own in an unobtrusive area and just see how it pulls up like that. Because that gives you an indication of how well this substrate is before you try to paint yourself. And then you can go in and yourself, like for example in here, which isn't going to be very visible, so that pulls up next to nothing. So it's much more susceptible around the edges than on the paint itself. So it's probably pretty safe to paint right over top of this. Make sure that you're rubbing down with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to remove any grease or wax and uh, like fingerprints even can prevent paint from not sticking. You might want to give this a little bit of a rundown with some steel wool just to give some uh, physical adhesion properties because it is really smooth and then do your isopropyl. But uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. So after I've made a mess of my shop unboxing this for you guys, you might still be asking, well, Joshua, with all of these problems on this airplane, why would I want to do this? OK, first of all, they're not problems. OK, they are Finicky bits. This model has proven for literally over a decade that it is a very good flyer. It is very reliable as it is. I've seen this model at numerous, numerous swap meets where people are like, yeah, I'll give you a, a, a few bucks for this. That's totally cool. I want a PBY. Um, it's a proven model. That is why. That is why I chose this because you guys think that I'm nitpicking all of these things and there's something wrong with it, but there's not. Out of the box, it's a perfectly acceptable model, but we can make it better. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make this model uh, a fun flyer with some fun little gimmicks and little things that we can do here and there and just explore what you can do as a modder of builds, okay? So get your knives out, get them sharpened, <laughs> break off a fresh blade. Uh, and I, seriously, guys, I'm going to take you on this journey and we're going to have some fun. We're going to do some modifications. We might cut ourselves. We might burn ourselves, but we're going to do some pretty awesome stuff. And I hope you're looking forward to it. We're going to do this throughout the winter. I've got other projects coming, so this will be interspersed, right? So we've got a new float plane slash snow plane for me, uh, but I'll be able to take this to Ceph next year because I'm always going to Ceph. You guys got to go to Ceph if you haven't been. Super fun. Uh, so until next time, guys.
keep on working on your flying works of art.